Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. It's story time again. So excited, huh? Yes, Baba. I really want to hear the story of Prophet Ishaq today. Hmm. Not much is known about Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam. So I will tell you all the known facts about this Prophet. And I will also tell you the story of Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, who was his son. Huh? Are you going to tell me the story of two prophets today? <laughs> all right, all right. Now sit down and listen carefully. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam and Yaqub alayhi salam. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam grew old and so did his wife Sarah. One day when he was sitting outside his house, he saw three men coming towards his house. The three men were actually angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet welcomed them inside to have food. The strangers went in and sat down for food. Prophet served them a roasted calf. But the strangers did not touch the food at all. The Prophet started to fear. Then the angels comforted the Prophet and asked him not to fear at all. They told him that they were actually the angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They informed him that they came to his house to deliver a good news. They said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to give them a son and that he should name him Ishaq. They also told him that his son would be a prophet. Sarah could not believe her ears. How could that be true? She wondered. I am so old. Then the angel said that all things are possible with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After a few months, Sarah got pregnant and gave birth to a child. The prophet named him Ishaq, as the angels told him. Ishaq grew up as an obedient boy. He worked hard, and like the angels foretold, he too became a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam was very old by the time Ishaq grew up. As he felt that his life was nearing its end, he wished to see his son get married. But he did not want Ishaq to marry one of the Canaanites, as they were all disbelievers. One day, he sent one of his trustworthy servants to Haran to choose a bride of Ishaq. The servant obeyed his master and traveled for many days to reach Haran. Once he reached Haran, the servant selected Rebekah, the daughter of Ibn Nahur, who was a brother of Prophet Ibrahim As his father wished, Ishaq married Rebecca. Rebecca didn't give birth to a child for a long time. Ishaq السلام, kept praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a child. And after many years, she gave birth to twins. Ishaq named them Esau and Yaqub. Esau grew up to be a strong man and he was a good hunter. But Yaqub was more intelligent and he was his father's favorite. There were frequent fights between the brothers as Esau disliked the fact that his father favored Yaqub more than him. Esau became more and more jealous as they grew. Ishaq السلام, grew old and he could not see clearly. One day, he asked Esau to go hunting and bring him some cooked meat. Rebecca, his wife, overheard the conversation and she ran to her son Yaqub. Esau agreed and went hunting for the meat. Slaughter two goats of your best flock, she said to him, and cook them as you know your father will like. Go and do this before your brother returns. Yaqub did as his mother had ordered. 
Rebecca then asked him to put on his brother's clothes and then she covered his hands and neck with goat skin. This was to make his skin feel like a sow who was very hairy. Then Yaqub stepped into his father's room. Who are you? asked Ishaq alayhi salam. I am your son, replied Yaqub in a deep voice. His father then started eating the food. Once he finished his food, he blessed Yaqub to be the better brother and to be the leader of his people. Once he got the blessings, he left the room. Esau returned with the meat after some time, and he entered his father's room. What is this, my son? The prophet asked when he heard Esau's footsteps. I've brought you the meat you like. Ishaq salam, was now confused. Didn't you bring me the food an hour ago? He asked him. I also gave you my blessings. No, I swear I did not, Esau said. He then knew that he had been cheated by Yaqub. He felt so angry that he wanted to kill Yaqub right away. Rebecca saw what had happened. So she went to Yaqub and ordered him to go to her brother Laban in the land of Haran. She asked him to stay there until his brother was not angry at him anymore. Yaqub salam left his family and started his journey towards Haran. He traveled for many days in the desert. One evening, he got very tired of walking and decided to get some rest. He took a stone and put it under his head and slept. That was when he had an amazing dream. In his dream, he saw a ladder from heaven to earth. He saw that the angels were coming down and going up the ladder. It was then that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Yaqub and this piece of land for his future generations. When he woke up, he exploded with joy. He took a vow that if he returned to his family safely, he would build a mosque here for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also vowed to give one-tenth of his property to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He poured oil on that stone so that he would be able to recognize this place later. This place is today known by the name of Jerusalem. The next morning, Yaqub set out for Haran. After many days of traveling, he finally reached Haran. Yaqub salam then met his maternal uncle Laban. His uncle was very happy to see him and invited him to his house. Laban had two daughters, Leah and Rachel. The Prophet started working hard for Laban. During his stay, he fell in love with his uncle's younger daughter, Rachel. After a few months, he asked Laban to marry Rachel. Work for me for seven years, he said, and I will let you marry my daughter. The Prophet agreed to his terms. Yaqub worked hard and Laban prospered. After the end of the seventh year, his uncle prepared a feast and gathered people for the wedding. But his uncle tricked him and he got his elder daughter Leah married to Yaqub. Leah was weak-sighted and ugly. Yaqub did not know about this and he discovered the truth only in the morning. When he realized that he had been tricked, he went to his uncle. You deceived me, he said to Laban. I was engaged to Rachel, and you married me to Leah? His uncle said, It is not our tradition to marry the younger daughter before the elder one. However, he added, If you love Rachel, work for another seven years and I will let you marry her. Yaqub salam worked hard for another seven years and then married Rachel. It was acceptable in their time as described in Torah for a man to marry two sisters. Laban gave a female slave to each daughter. 
Leah's slave was called Zilpa, and Rachel's slave was called Bilha. What happened then? I will tell you the remaining story tomorrow. Oh no! Please tell me now, Baba. Please, please. Come on, it's time for you to go to sleep. I will ask you a few questions now, and I'll tell you the rest of the story tomorrow. All right, Baba. Are you ready for the question? Yes. Why did the three angels come to the house of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam? They came to deliver the news that they were going to have a son. Masha Allah, that's the correct answer. What was the name of the wife of Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam? I know that. It was Rebecca. That's right again. What were the names of Prophet Ishaq's sons? It was Esau and and Yakub. That's right again. Now tell me why Esau hated Yakub. Hmm. Esau hated him because he was his father's favorite son, and also that God chose him as the next prophet. That's correct. What was the name of Yakub's uncle in Haran? Hmm. Wasn't it Laban? That's correct again. How long did Yakub work for Laban? First he worked for seven years, and then he worked for another seven years. It's fourteen. The prophet worked for fourteen years for Laban. What were the names of the daughters of Laban? They were Leah and Rachel. Masha Allah, you gave all the right answers. That's all for today. I will tell you the story of another prophet tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Did you finish your homework today? Yes, Baba, I did. So, are you ready for the story of another prophet? I'm always ready for the stories of prophets. Oh, is that so? <laughs> Insha Allah, I will tell you the story of Prophet Lut alayhi salam today. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Lut alayhi salam. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam left the city of Babylon along with his nephew Lut alayhi salam and Sara. They traveled for many days in the desert. Prophet Lut alayhi salam then decided to go to the city of Sodom, which was on the western shore of the Dead Sea. The city was filled with evil people. The people of the town were very wicked and they attacked the travelers passing by. Another common evil among the people of Sodom was that the men had sex with men instead of women. They were all gay people. No one had committed such sins ever before. This unnatural sin was later known as sodomy after the city of Sodom. The people committed this sin without any shame in front of everyone. It was during the heights of crimes and sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his messenger, Prophet Lut alayhi salam, to call the people back to him. The Prophet summoned the people to give up their indecent behavior, but they were sunk way too deep in their sins that they were deaf to the Prophet's preaching. Lut alayhi salam then warned them of Allah's punishment, but then they threatened to drive him out of the city if he kept on preaching. The Prophet was saddened when they continued their way of life. The news of the evil men in Sodom spread throughout the land. The Prophet continued with his struggle to correct their ways. Years passed and the Prophet continued with his mission. No one responded to his call except for the members of his family. And even in his family, not everyone listened to his words. And this included one of his wives. 
with very few people to believe in him. The Prophet was tormented both inside and outside his home. His life was a continuous torture and he suffered greatly. But the Prophet remained patient and steadfast with his people. Years went by, but no one was willing to listen to him. They even mocked at him by saying, If what you are saying is true, then bring Allah's punishment to us. When the people refused to listen to him even after so many years, the Prophet finally lost hope in them. And that's when Allah decided to send the angels to destroy the evil people in Sodom. The angels took human form and went to the house of Ibrahim salam. Prophet Ibrahim salam and his wife Sarah were very old by now. He invited the angels to have food at his home and the angels agreed. The Prophet served roasted calf to all the angels but they didn't touch the food at all. When Ibrahim salam noticed that they were not even touching the food, he started to worry and he started fearing them. The visitors then informed the Prophet that they were actually angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They told him that Sarah will get pregnant soon and that she will give birth to a child. The Prophet and his wife were delighted to hear this news. The angels told the Prophet that they should name their son Ishaq and that he would grow up to become a prophet as well. The angels then walked towards the city of Sodom. They reached the walls of the town in the afternoon. Then they started walking towards the river. The first person who caught the sight of the angels was Lut salam's daughter. She was sitting beside the river filling water in her jug. When she lifted her face and saw them, she was stunned. Never before had she seen such beautiful men in her whole life. She couldn't believe that such beauty even existed on earth. Is there any place to rest? Asked one of the angels. Stay here, she replied. She knew that if the evil men in her town saw them, they would try to harm these strangers. Do not enter until I informed my father, she told them. She then left her jug beside the river and ran quickly to inform her father. Oh father, there are three young and attractive men at the town gate. I have never seen such beautiful faces before. The prophet got worried and he ran to the town gate. The Prophet did not recognize that they were actually angels as he thought they were travelers passing by. Where did you come from? The Prophet asked them. And where are you going? But they did not answer his question. Instead, they asked if they could stay at his house. Lut salam was in a dilemma now. He wanted to tell these strangers not to stay because of the evil people in the city without offending them. Yet, at the same time, he wanted to extend the hospitality shown to the guests. He tried several times to convince them, but they insisted on staying in the city. At last, he told them to wait outside the town gate till night, so that no one would see them. When it became dark, Lut salam went to the gates and escorted the strangers to his home. As the Prophet planned, no one saw them. When they reached his house, the Prophet's wife saw them and she slipped out of the house quietly. No one noticed her leaving the house. She ran to her people and informed them about the beautiful strangers at her house. The news of the strangers spread like wildfire. Everyone rushed to Lut salam's house to see the strangers. Luth was surprised when he saw the people coming towards his house. He wondered how they got the news of the strangers. And when he noticed that his wife was missing, he realized that it was she who informed the people. The Prophet was very sad that she cheated on them. 
When Luth saw the mob approaching his house, he immediately shut the door, but the people kept banging at the door. He pleaded with them to leave the strangers alone. He warned them of Allah's punishment. The evil people of Sodom roared with laughter when they heard the Prophet's words, and they broke down the door. Lut tried to defend his guests, but he stood powerless against these violent people. He wished that he had the power to save his guests. When the angels saw the Prophet in a state of despair, they revealed themselves to the Prophet. Do not be frightened. We are the angels, and these people will not harm you, they said to the Prophet. When the mob heard the angels, they fled from the Prophet's house terrified. They abused the Prophet and ran to their homes. The angels then asked Lut to leave the town before sunrise. They asked him to take with him everyone, except the wife who cheated on him. Lut left the city at dawn, like the angels asked him to. He took with him two of his daughters, who were the only believers. When the morning came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the destruction of the most corrupted city on earth. At first, he sent the earthquake that rocked the city down. It was as if a mighty power had lifted the entire city and flung it down in one jolt. And then he sent a storm of stones that rained on the city. Everyone in the city was destroyed, including the Prophet's wife. The town of Sodom was erased from the face of the earth. And no one survived except the Prophet and his daughters. Lut then went to see his uncle, Ibrahim He visited them and told him what happened in Sodom. But Ibrahim السلام, already knew what had happened as the angels had informed him beforehand. Lut السلام, continued to invite people to Allah and so did Ibrahim السلام, for a long, long time. That was such an amazing story, Baba. Masha Allah, I am glad you liked it. I have a doubt. Go on, ask me. How was Prophet Ibrahim and Lut related? Prophet Lut السلام, was the nephew of Prophet Ibrahim السلام. Oh, now I remember. Thank you. All right, now are you ready for the questions? I'm ready. Okay, now tell me which of these were the sins committed by the people living in Sodom? Option A, sodomy. Option B, stealing. Option C, idol worshipping. It was sodomy. That's the right answer. Very good. Now for the next question. Who were the three strangers to visit the land of Sodom? They were the angels. MashaAllah! That was so quick. All right, now for the next question. When the angels arrived at the town gate, who was the first to see them? Hmm, the angels were first seen by the Prophet's daughter. That's right again. Why didn't the Prophet invite the strangers to his house right away? Why did he ask them to wait till night? The strangers were very beautiful and the Prophet knew that if the evil people of Sodom saw them, they would hurt these strangers. That's why he asked them to stay there till night. Masha Allah, that's impressive, Amr. That's brilliant, my son. Now that's all for today. I will tell you the story of another prophet tomorrow.